Welcome to Soul Zero Two. This is the podcast that's putting the oxygen back into the Christian life one soul at a time. So glad to be with you today. And uh, we have been uh, just muddling through in a way and battling through this pandemic in so many ways. And sometimes the difficult part isn't what what comes during it, but what comes after. And what I'm sensing these days more than ever is the continual feeling of confinement that uh, people feel in their lives and uh, which is kind of residue from from the season because if if you're like me you realize that confinement is something that you can feel even if you're out among a thousand people it doesn't matter you can feel confined but uh, so we're going to be talking the next two times about the meaning of confinement. We've done this in audio form before, I think a couple months ago, but I'm going to start making these in video form so that people can benefit from them who want to watch the videos. And the videos will have more details and more and graphics, obviously, and things like that. But I uh, want to thank you so much for listening and for watching and for engaging with us. And, and we hope to grow this podcast. So with that, I'd like to invite you to check out our website soul02.com and please subscribe to our youtube channel that is uh uh i just started it like maybe two months ago and uh we're, we're trying to build it up and and i believe this blesses you and benefits you so please bless us back and just subscribe to it and uh and see what god does but in the future i want to also point out that we're going to be just changing things here and there and doing different ideas, uh, maybe in the, in the fall. But uh, today specifically, I want to talk about this idea of confinement, but specifically six signs that you're in a season of confinement. I don't mean that you're confined, but that you're in a season of confinement. And when I say season of confinement, it means that when you're in a season, no matter what you do, you're in that season. You can't just flip a switch and stop the season especially when God's behind it or God allowed you to walk through it. You have to let it, like a storm, burn itself out until it finishes. And so six signs that you're, you're, you're in a confinement. But Charles Dickens, his opening line of A Tale of Two Cities, encapsulates this season we're living in. He says it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. <clears throat> it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. And if any other season ever felt like that, this is it. With this season, most people have, have been confined and are coming out of confinement only to find that that feeling of confinement is still with them. That no matter what they do, even if they go to the beach and go crazy and have a party or whatever they do, they still feel this residue of confinement. Why is that? Because I believe, in a sense, that sometimes seasons don't just stop with the flip of a switch or with just you know me declaring that they're over. But you're not alone. In the Bible, there are people that, that were confined and struggled with all kinds of confinement. Joseph, in chapter 40 of Genesis, he struggled with confinement. He was confined for 11 years in a prison. And most of his life was, was battling accusations and false accusations and his brothers being jealous of him. And so he lived a life in a sense of confinement. But it's what he did in his confinement that blows our minds. And we'll, we'll talk about that later on maybe in the next part of this, but Jeremiah was another person in Jeremiah 37 that was confined, and he was thrown into this, this deep well, and it says, and Jeremiah sank in the mud. If that is, isn't a definition of what it feels to be confined, where, where you're kind of in quicksand and you can't get out, then Paul, the apostle, he spent years in prison where he did awesome things, and sometimes in our confinement, we can do greater things than if we were free. And maybe that's one reason why we go through seasons of confinement, because God is saying, there's something in you I'm trying to pull out of you like gold. So confinement is difficult because if we don't remain focused, it can turn a home into a cage. And when you're in a season of confinement, it doesn't matter whether you're in your home or out of your home, you're going to still feel 
that confinement. But when you're in that place where you're trusting God with all your heart, it doesn't matter how confined you are. You're as free as a bird because you know that he's in charge and nothing's going to going to destroy your life, that you're going to be okay through it. So six signs that you're in a season of confinement. The first one is this, claustrophobia. Claustrophobia has been defined by, by a medical news article as a form of uh, anxiety disorder in which an irrational fear of having no escape or being closed in can lead to, to panic. It's that feeling like the walls are closing in and you kind of are, are flipping out and you're saying, what am I going to do? And I've seen people go through this even when they're not in a physically confined environment, even when they're not homebound, because life can be those walls, because a trial or a tribulation can be those walls closing in on you. So in physical incarceration, for instance, movements are limited and uh, people are limited to a room or a yard or let's say a mess hall. And we can easily fall into a rut of limitedness when we're in this season. This is why we have to be deliberate in times of confinement. But another sign is this, disconnection. Disconnection. Have you ever felt a, a disconnect in a situation? Or have you ever felt disconnected from a person that you once cared about? In 1947, Albert Camus wrote a novel based on the cholera epidemic that happened in uh, 1849 called The Plague. The book was called The Plague. And he talks about one of the effects that the plague had on people who were longing to connect to other people. They, they lost their connection. And he said this, there comes an hour when all one cries for is a loved face, the warmth and wonder of a loving heart. And this is one of the, the painful feelings of confinement, disconnection from those you love disconnection from from even yourself sometimes we become self-alienated where we don't know ourselves in this season we're separated from our normal selves we don't know what normal is so we we don't feel like like we, we know who we are so for those who are undergoing uh, or, or or having an ongoing uh, confinement this this season and maybe this talk is for you today and there are people who get their energy from being around other people. They're outgoing, they're vivacious, they have all kinds of energy, and they literally get renewed by being around people. That's not my personality. I, I tend to get energy by being by myself, even though I can enjoy the company of people also. But for those who are really the energetic types, who gain their energy by being with people, this is a challenging season for you. And you, maybe you feel like you're exiled in a way. When you're exiled is when you're banished or expelled from, from a place, whether it's a country or a town or, or a family. And in exile, something deep within us becomes ruptured in our connection to our past, in our connection to people. And in the present or even in the future, there's a connection because, or disconnection because we feel like, well, what future do I have? I don't even know who I am right now or what's happening in my life or my family. So we become banished from ourselves in a way. We become exiled from ourselves because we miss the person we used to be before this pandemic happened. And we say, well, I just don't know who I am right now or what I'm doing or what kind of person I'm supposed to be today. And I was talking to someone the other day who said, I just don't know if I spent the last eight hours in the right way with my energy and with my time because this season is so weird. So often we don't feel like ourselves. We don't know ourselves in these seasons. And a clear sign of disconnection is even if you leave home today and take an eight hour drive somewhere, you still don't feel like you're free. That's a sign of disconnection. That's a sign that you're still in this confined mindset. But a third indicator that you're in a season of confinement is this, every day feels like yesterday. I heard a song years ago, and I can't remember the song, but it said one day bleeds into another, which I thought were great lyrics. But have you ever felt like that, that you can't distinguish one day from the other because all days seem like the same. Every day feels like yesterday. 
and facing tomorrow is in a way stressful because you're afraid it's going to be the same as today. You're afraid that nothing's ever going to change, that this season will never end. And thus you have the movie Groundhog Day where Phil Connors, a TV weatherman, uh, during his assignment covering Groundhog Day, he's caught up in a time loop and he's living the same day over and over and over again. But a fourth one I want to give you is restlessness. That is a common one, and I'm sure you already knew that even before I said it. Restlessness. Maybe you feel like a caged lion going back and forth in your cage. And you feel like, what do I do with myself? And is it any surprise that home projects went up very high percentage? I don't know the percentage, but it went up very high. And places like Home Depot made a lot of money because people were so restless that they started fixing stuff and upgrading things. Restlessness can lead, to, can lead to struggling with thoughts and fantasies also. And it can lead to excesses of, of, of social media, of binge watching your favorite show, of porn, anything. And that's why we have to be careful during the seasons because we become restless. And when you become restless, you are tempted to cast off all restraint. And it seems like we're in a season where people are just casting off restraint. They can't take it anymore. We can be tempted to do things that we would not normally do. Here's number five, and we're going to bring this in for a landing because I don't want to make these too long for you, but depression is a big one for confinement. When we feel confined, and, and, and again, this is more than physical confinement because at this point, people are getting out of their homes and they're moving about, but they're still acting like they're confined in a way. There's still this feeling like you're in a psychological prison. So add to the problems we struggle with, with feeling that, that we have nothing to look forward to. And you have this idea of depression. And Jeremiah, as I said earlier, was thrown down into a well. And that picture, imagine the picture. It says, and Jeremiah sank in the mud. To me, that's a picture of depression in our life. Because depression means a lowering or a pressing down. It's when you just feel down. And in these seasons where you feel confined, you don't feel creative, you don't feel motivated, you don't feel like you want to work, you don't feel like you want to get up and work out. And instead, we can give into depression. And the next time we get together, I'm going to talk about maybe ways we can battle this and deal with it. But here's the sixth one. You feel powerless to change it. That's probably the worst feeling of all, the feeling of powerlessness. When you feel like no matter what I do or try, it's not going to change. Powerlessness is a feeling that, that none of us should ever feel, but yet we have felt it. You know that something should change. You long for it to change, but you don't have the power to do it. And this is what I mean by, by having this season of confinement that maybe, maybe you feel like you're out of it, in a sense, in a physical sense, but maybe spiritually or psychologically, you're still in it. And you feel like, when is this season going to end? And so I want to encourage you today that as we, as we move forward, as whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, if you're not a Christian, this is the time to really find God because he, he will find you. If you look for him, he'll find you. But I want to just encourage you to not give up in this season that seems to be dragging on now, the season that seems to be continuing and continuing. And don't give up because if you have God and if you trust in God, He's going to get you through. And you're going. To, there's going to be time for your creativity and time for hope in the future. But you have to be faithful now and don't give up now. And don't let yourself go now. So the next time, thank you so much for listening. Again, again, connect with us on our on our website, uh, soul02.com. And uh, there you'll find uh, different, uh, uh, different articles and, and, and uh, you know, blogs. And, and now we have a YouTube channel, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel if this has been a blessing to you, which I think it has. And uh, until next time, uh, it'd be great to see you again. So thanks for listening. God bless you. Thank you.